Living a well-balanced lifestyle goes beyond ensuring your finances are in order. Welcome to Keeping the Well in Wealthy with Barbara Archer from Hightower. Barbara speaks with wellness industry leaders and related professionals to share more than financial planning advice. She addresses your questions about living a healthy lifestyle at any age. Learn how to gracefully maneuver life's challenges with support and resources to guide you along the way. Barbara and the team at Hightower help you make a plan, make an investment, and make a difference in your own wealth and well-being, and in your families, and within your community. Thank you for listening to Keeping the Well in Wealthy with Barbara Archer, sponsored by Hightower. Now, on to the show. Hello, and welcome to Keeping the Well in Wealthy with your host, Barbara Archer from Hightower. Barbara, how are you? I am terrific, Eric. How are you today? Doing very, very well. Thank you. I'm keeping the well in me right now. <laughs> oh, good. That that you should be doing every day, please. <laughs> yeah, I'm working on it. Now, I know you have another amazing guest on the show. Who did you bring on? Oh, today I have Sarah Bonbranek, and we're going to introduce her in a minute after I ask you a couple of questions. All right. So Thanksgiving is coming up, and I want to know how you celebrate. Oh, we, we always get together as a family. In fact, this year we're trying to figure out whose house to go to because as I moved recently and we do, do not have the room, I'm still trying to unpack. So we're going to be <laughs> going to somebody else's house, which is a whole challenge for my wife because she's usually doing her thing in the kitchen and now she's going to be kind of maybe helping somebody else in theirs. So that's going to be fun. Oh, it will be fun. Just getting the family together oh, is yeah. great. Yeah. But I will tell you, I find it interesting that we have one day dedicated to Thanksgiving, mm. when both our hearts and science tell us that expressing gratitude is associated with a bounty of physical and mental benefits. Mm. I read a recent article that said our brains are designed to problem solve rather than appreciate. So to overcome this, it is suggested that we practice gratitude daily. Eric, have you ever kept a gratitude journal? I, okay, <laughs> confession time. I did for about two weeks because we did it through our church and it was just kind of, it was almost like a little social experiment and I fell off the wagon. I mean, I, I did it for uh -oh. at least 10 days, <laughs> but even when the end of that came and we had a nice discussion about it and it was great, I just didn't continue it. And I, yeah. Eric, it takes 21 days to build a habit. Well, Remember that's that. that's what happened then. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't stick with it long enough. That's right. Well, it was introduced back in the mid nineties by our next guest. Oh. the mother of the Gratitude Journal, Sarah Bonbranek. So Eric, at the end of our discussion today, please consider sharing at least three things for which you are grateful. You got it. Okay. Then off I go to introduce Sarah Bonbranek. She is an author of 13 books, including her number one New York Times bestsellers, Simple Abundance, A Daybook of Comfort and Joy, and something more, excavating your authentic self. She is the creator of two concepts, the gratitude journal and the term authentic self. These were brought into our jargon because of her. So additionally, Sarah has been a contributing editor of Good Housekeeping and syndicated columnist for the Washington Post Writers Group. I saw her in Oprah Winfrey and she was on there more than once and Oprah called Sarah's work life-changing. Time Magazine called her the Martha Stewart of the soul. And Deepak Chopra has said, Sarah Bonbranek is a one-woman woman's movement, an awakener of awareness whose simple message has timeless roots. She exemplifies a surging social movement much greater than herself. This is just the subversively cosmic voice society needs. So... As the creator of the Simple Abundance Journal of Gratitude, I invited Sarah to join us today as we prepare for Thanksgiving. So welcome, Sarah. Thank you very much, Barbara. I'm very happy to be here. Well, I am so grateful to have you on our show. You know I'm a big fan, and we'll talk about that a little later. But with the holidays approaching, it is perfect timing for you to share with our audience your guide to gratitude and Thanksgiving. So, Sarah, how did you start on this mission to help others celebrate quiet joys, simple pleasures, and well-spent moments? Well, I, my, my journey with Simple Abundance began during the recession of 91, 1992. 
and I was living in Washington then, and I was a freelance writer, and I had completed two books on Victorian decorative details, and I was going to do uh, a third book. No, I'd completed two books. They were on Victorian family life, and I was going to do Victorian decorative details, and a writer is with a book for at least two years. And dur- during that, re- that the Great Recession, as they call it, life was falling apart. And every day was doom and gloom. Every day was an announcement of how many thousands of people had lost their jobs. Downshifting was the only word that news seemed to be able to use. And I don't think women particularly whine to other women. They wouldn't keep their friends very long if they did. <laughs> but <laughs> but we do we do whine to ourselves. And I was a constant whine to myself and to heaven. And um, one day I just got tired of hearing my own voice just complaining. Well, you were losing and, yourself as a friend, right? From whining to yourself. Well, I was losing myself from a friend. I was extremely worried about money. I That was a time that if I could not write a check on my writing, it didn't count. It was just, it wasn't an easy time. But there was this one morning and I heard in my heart another voice that said, I want you to sit down here at the kitchen table and I want you not to get up or leave before you've given me over a hundred reasons why you're grateful for your life exactly as it is today and money cannot be on it. Oh, that's a wonderful start. Wow. (laughs) Well, it was six pots of tea and about eight hours later because I had to do carpool, but that's how it began. And I was amazed and humbled because I was so rich the real wealth of the uh ralph waldo emerson says health is the first wealth and that's the well in you keeping in wealthy so i but gratitude was new to me and so i didn't want to forget this prompt so i started writing it down on just post-it notes index cards paper towels where (laughs) if the thought came I wrote it down. So a departure from the Victorian theme. Oh, yes, very much, very much. And because I, I, yeah, I couldn't do that book. I know it was a a tough time financially then. And it's interesting, you started with a a hundred reasons to be grateful. Because when I tried to understand what is gratitude, I found it to have acknowledged importance in the religious philosophical and scientific realms. And I read many explanations from it being an affirmative of an affirmation of goodness Mm -hmm. with the sources of this goodness being outside of ourselves. And even reading that the Roman scholar Cicero claimed that gratitude is the greatest of all virtues. So Sarah, Mm -hmm. how do you personally define gratitude? I define gratitude as the saving grace and Wonderful. as our connection to the divine lovely uh, that helps us manage earthly problems i consider gratitude a refuge especially when i'm not grateful and i just like to to point out that so here i was with post it notes and just the practical journalist <clears throat> said why don't you just keep them in a journal instead of these hundreds of post-it notes. I said, that's not a bad idea. Started collecting them in a journal. Now, the secret, the turning point that happened for me was after about two to three months of writing down five things. And I made myself do five things because I would have to look for that fourth and fifth thing to be grateful for that day. And I found that at that point, I felt very full and I didn't feel as downcast as I had before. So my reaction to the news, which was doom and gloom and downshifting, it was no, it, no, that's really not true. Then I noticed the thing about simple abundance and gratitude that, that I love 
is that it's organic. It's practical, it's creative, but it's very spiritual. Well, um, I'm spirit- going to interrupt here because I am going to share with the audience what a big fan I am of yours. Because <laughs> back when I was a stressed out working mother of young children, this was in 1995, your book, Simple Abundance, came out. And it taught me to enjoy simple pleasures and precious moments and to keep a gratitude journal, which I believe still keeps me sane to this day. So unlike Mm -hmm. Eric, who did it for 10 days, I've done it since 1995. (laughs) Thanks to you. So (laughs) you you were an important pivot in my life on how I approached every morning. I'd read a chapter (laughs) and then apply it for the day. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. Thank thank you for the compliment. I do always like to say that to anybody who says my life changed, I like to say, well, you changed your life. And it was between the great creator, spirit, and you. That's who you met on the the gratitude pages. (laughs) So do you journal before going to sleep or upon rising in the morning? I I do both. Ah. I know, like like Eric, you can you can keep it you can keep it up, and you think it's going well. But even though I know it works, there are times that are so stressful to, in our lives, and just rushing the toing and froing of, of rushing of the breathlessness of the twenty four seven cycle. <laughs> you know, Too many break. of us know that pace, <laughs> right? I'm exhausted when I get to bed and I'll, I'll try to be thinking like my sheep, counting your sheep, uh, sure. I'll be thinking of what I was grateful for and then I'll fall asleep. But the thing is, it, life happens so fast right now and we receive so many little blessings every day. I like to say, I mean, Simple Abundance taught me all you have is all you need at this moment. Mm. At this moment, it's not talking about later. It's not talking about tomorrow, next week. It's saying at this moment, if you will just calm, step back. Take a breath, huh? Take a (laughs) breath. And my favorite expression is I'm calling you a blessing, which is very transformative, especially Mm. when you're, it's coming through gritted teeth. That Ah, that, through gritted teeth. Yeah. Tell me more about that. So when um, you I, call something a blessing, when you're in a difficult situation. Yeah, because um, there's only two ways to go when you're given horrible news. You can just go into fear, which is very real, even though the best definition of fear I've ever heard is false evidence appearing real. You can go there or you can go and... Uh, You'll hear, I'd say, I'm calling you a blessing. I am calling you a blessing. I don't know how you're a blessing, but I'm calling you a blessing. (laughs) And this is an ancient, this is an ancient spiritual practice. It's not anything that I have made up or channeled. It's ancient. Wow. So I've learned something right there. So when I'm having a tough day and a little frustrated, I'm going to say, what a blessing. No, you don't have to say it that way, Barbara. (laughs) (laughs) How do I say it? That that would not be the way I would be saying it. It would be, I'm calling you a blessing. I'm calling you a blessing because I know that I have to. Got it. You see, the insight that that I've discovered over, you know, 30 years is that when you know how the universe operates, you can't play dumb. And pretend it's it. That's not how it's going to be working. So you face it and own it. Face it and saying. own it. Face it and own it, and know that if you ask, you're not going to be the only person that gives the answer because at that point you don't have an answer. But that's what gratitude does. And sometimes, sometimes on in my gratitude journal, I'll go back and there'll be day is number one. Day is over. Number two going to sleep <laughs> number three can forget and it's it, it, gratitude is really very earthy gutsy grit gratitude is spiritual moxie 
if I like I that spiritual moxie. Okay. <laughs> we all, yeah, we, we're all blessed with spiritual moxie. Well, um, you know, I've read where behavior changes biology and that positive gestures like recording a happy moment as in journaling or writing someone a thank you note can release oxytocin. That's a hormone mm-hmm. that helps connect people sometimes called the love hormone. Right. So in learning this, what's the difference between passive versus active gratitude? Well, this came, you know, years later. I, uh, I, I realized that the first step is writing down the gratitude. Well, the first step is acknowledging the grat- gratitude. The first step is being able to say, oh, I just said, help me. And I was helped. Mm-hmm. I just said, help me find the keys. And <laughs> I found the keys. And now I've learned to put the keys in the precise position where they belong as there soon as I go through the door. But um, passive gratitude is the gratitude journal. After it has occurred, and you remember it, and you write it down. But I, gratitude is a grace. It, she, she's living. Uh, she's a living, divine grace. And you can make it active by when you wake up in the morning. And when I wake up in the morning, I have a particular prayer that I, I say before I even open my eyes. But then you can say, please accompany me to gratitude throughout the day and help me see the day through your eyes. Mm -hmm. So you're inviting gratitude to be a silent companion with you as you go through your day. Another way that I think of gratitude and the actively is I think of them as three coins. There are six principles to simple abundance. And that's what I meant when I said that they're very organic. There's nothing that's attached. They really grow from each other. And gratitude sink roots into our, the soil of our soul. And then the, the, the saplings that come from those roots become the trunk. And that's simplicity. And then the branches become order. And then the leaves on the branches become harmony. And then the blossoms are beauty and that we are sheltered by such an extraordinary natural occurrence. A beautiful where... image. Yes. So how, the... how do you tie those into the three coins? <laughs> well, this is another, everything I've done is practical. Everything I've done is uh, uh, like teaching a toddler how to shut, drive. Well, <laughs> as well, you taught shirt. me before. So <laughs> I, I want to hear about your three coins. I mean, I love the analogy. I keep three coins on my, on my desk. I keep three silver do- dollars that I, I was given somebody, but given from a family member and who said about 30 years, yeah, hold on to these. They'll be valuable for you in a way. And they, this is the sound of the three silver dollars. Oh, I love it. The reason there are three coins is, you know, there's the gratitude is the front of the coin, coin and joy, which comes last, will be the, the back of it. But with, in, if you understand the progression, it's gratitude, simplicity, and order. Simplicity and order are the front and back of that coin. And okay. then harmony and beauty uh, are their coin. And then gratitude uh, gives you joy. The reason gratitude gives you joy, again, is very practical. Because you are listing in your gratitude journal things that made you happy. Things that made you content or calm. So that's the wellspring of joy. That really is started with the natural progression of of gratitude. Excuse the interruption. I know you're listening to Hightower's Keeping the Well and Wealthy podcast. But if you have questions related to these or other wellness and financial issues, please reach out to your advisor or go to hightoweradvisors.com to find a financial advisor near you. Now, back to Barbara. Oh, that's so lovely. Well, (laughs) I can tell you that I learned a little bit from my mother about fleeting moments of joy. She had dementia and always Mm. enjoyed parties throughout her life. And Mm -hmm. I realized in her later years, she enjoyed 
the very present moment in simple things from tasting a chocolate milkshake to seeing a beautiful flower or giving or receiving a hug. So I started calling these party moments with her and she would just laugh because (laughs) it was a way to express gratefulness for those moments that she and I connected and she found joy. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, she, you, you brought the party with you. I did, <laughs> in front of her. We had our party. We still had a great time. Yeah, that's wonderful. <laughs> and a happy memory. It is a very happy memory. So these six graces and your three coins, mm-hmm. the gratitude is the foundation, those roots. That's where we start. Mm-hmm. And so... Tell me a little bit about order and simplicity growing then into beauty and harmony. Because in your book, one of the things I started doing was putting out fresh flowers, Mm -hmm. buying beautiful sheets, using my gorgeous china that Mm -hmm. I had received 42 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. But all of the things that we hear about today from, I guess they're calling it mindfulness and appreciating something that's beautiful. So years ago, I started to learn that from you. So could you take us from gratitude and joy to the order and simplicity and beauty and harmony kind of? Uh, sure. That, that's what I meant when I said it's organic. Mm-hmm. Because if you've been working for the first time, if you've been working with gratitude for two months and um, you've been noticing things in your life and recording them and you begin to start to feel very full. And this is where you begin to distinguish between your needs and your wants. And that is a crucial lesson for us to discover a crucial spiritual lesson, but also practical and creative. That's why it always fascinates me. And I'm thrilled and so grateful for it that simple abundance is all of practical, creative, and spiritual. But when you start to feel full, you can look at your life and the way you're spending your time and and see how much, it, are you even on your to-do list? We not. For a lot, a lot of women, millions of them, um, <laughs> I heard after simple abundance. My, my job is just to get you on your to-do list, but that's gratitude's job too because you have a desire to divest when the will cannot, you cannot impose on will to make profound changes. The soul divests for you. Well, this becomes really important. The reason I want you to tell us the story is because with inflation rising and some people feeling scarcity instead of abundant, the story is just as valid today as it was 30 years ago. Yeah, that's what's so amazing to me, uh, which which makes me feel very grateful and very, very humble and very surprised but because I've used it so many. I use it constantly. But when, you, or ta- when you're not taking care of yourself and caretakers do not take care of themselves, caretakers know how to take care of other people. <laughs> There you go. But but they don't know how to take care of themselves. So I would, again, use a little trick. And that would be, I'd look at my week, and I would just yellow highlight two hours uh, together somewhere in the week. But I wouldn't write what it was for, because I knew if I wrote haircut or something, something, and I was asked to do something, that would be the first time to go. Um, would be time that I had set out for myself. So your but highlighted it, two hours was only for you. Right. In okay. yellow, no marking. It simply okay. meant this is your time. It's in, it, it's invaluable. You cannot, this is your time. <laughs> and I found that they gave me the permission that when I was asked to do something, I could say, Oh, God, I really would like to help, but I've got a prior engagement then. Is there another way I can help? And that gave me the courage to learn how to say no, which really isn't saying no. It's saying, I just, I can't do it right now. Uh, and That's uh, an art many of us aren't very good at saying. Right. No. So, right. so oh, it gives yeah. us permission to take care it, of ourselves. Care of ourselves. That was what simplicity did. And once that happens, 
that's when you begin to quiet down the wants Hmm. and you begin to have the time to distinguish between your needs and your wants and simplicity when you find out you're making your schedule simpler order just she just appears at the door this divine sent woman and it, it usually it happened for me when I opened a hall closet and everything fell out on top of me oh my gosh and, and I said okay this has got to stop and that was order so order helped well, me I'm go glad to- you can't see my desk as we sit here speaking <laughs> right now I had to clear mine so that we could go so that's how order came and she is the one because gra- gratitude has become second nature order is the one that I still need to work on because it's it's ordering in our space order teaches us that clutter is really there to protect us in some way but gratitude is giving us the courage and gratitude and simplicity to learn and to feel that we can protect or we can start to take care of ourselves Mm, so lovely well Thank you. That, so when you release. when you have a when you have a clean kitchen counter, <laughs> and you're not, you know, yes, enjoy it. So look enjoy at it and say, it. look, I mean, there's order. Look at the simplicity, so and then there's beauty and yeah, harmony. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And then I can yeah. write it in my journal. My kitchen counter looks oh, gorgeous today. Yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> and I have, I oh. have, written. and so. we appreciate it. There you go. <laughs> So, Sarah, I know a lot has changed in the past decades, and I thought life went very fast years ago, and it doesn't seem to be slowing down, and you have a daughter that's a new mother, is that right? Yes, yes. So, if you were giving her some guidance today, what, what has changed? What are we doing differently, or what could we be doing differently to really capture those moments today? Well, I think that, the, you know, our daughters, our millennial daughters, our Generation Z daughters, I think that the first thing that's happening is that, that they are noticing that they are doing the same traps that we got caught, in, caught up in. Um, we can't really say to them, if you do, well, I can't, because if you do it this way, you know, it, who wants a mother that's saying that when she has a baby? No. Right, um, right. I, uh, but b- b- before Kate had the baby, she was trying to think, re- redo her life. She's a film producer and a manager and ver- very talented and ver- worked very hard. And I was trying to say to her, I said, you know, in your 20s, you don't even know who you are. And then in your 30s, you start to know you start to distinguish your needs and your wants. And then you start to have children and you lose yourself again. And she looked at me and she said, yeah, why is that? (laughs) Well, then today, I mean, we talked about all the changes, but with Harmony, with social media and 24-hour news, it's sometimes hard to... You know, oh, it's, just it's, push it, that all out of our heads and our lives. It's not just hard, it's impossible or I would, difficult. Hard, difficult, and then impossible. And the only way, I think the message, the hidden message in Simple Abundance, which has always been there, but I think now, the reason I wanted to adapt or rewrite Simple Abundance for the 21st century, and I jokingly say, but I'm there's always truth behind humor. I say, it's not your mother's simple abundance. It's your simple abundance. And the reason for that is social media. Think of it, it's 24 seven, it's breaking news. Think of all Instagram, the culture, we used to have it in print magazines, but the insidious way that social media affects us, it's so dangerous. And so if you start your day scrolling before you've even had, you know, as soon as you can see the light on, on your phone, 
you've already lost the day. It's creating boundaries that protect you and yours. And when I was writing Simple Abundance, and I was the mother of a young child, um, and I had to create create boundaries. Sure. And and boundaries are so much more needed today. I don't look at social media un- until late in the afternoon, five o'clock. If something is happening that is going to change my life or change something, um, I don't need to know about it in uh, at nine o'clock. I'm particularly concerned, Barbara, uh, with the idea that we now are this one world and it's brought to it's brought to us and that we see danger and we see tragedy as they are happening Mm -hmm. and the fact that we cannot do and if we could do something to help the people that we are watching in danger that would be one thing but we can't enter the television screen we can't transport us there so all we are doing is taking the danger and the tragedy inside us. It has to go somewhere. And it's coming straight off that social media into your heart. You, you need to be able to have a day where you can do distinguish again between your needs and your wants. Give thanks. Take care of your family. And then you're able to have an appropriate response to help and to do help in some way, which we all, we all feel the need to. And we, and I would say many of us do. So you're right. Uh, we do need to sometimes just give us that distance to, to and it's take, not, yeah, take the time and put it in perspective and what can be done mm-hmm. and what we could do whether it's financially, with time, with mm-hmm. volunteering, with charity, mm-hmm. it's giving, right? So mm-hmm. we're sharing our abundance. And it's why keeping ourselves well and healthy and viewing the world not with scarcity, but with abundance and with gratefulness, we can be better prepared to help others. Yes, yes. And we don't realize that the danger that we cause ourselves and i'm especially concerned too about millennials and generation z and women who live on social media and watch uh, you know instagram and think it's real and it's not this is the time of the year that when there used to be print magazines you'd always get the magazine saying the best christmas ever ah uh, yes and, all those and, pretty yeah. pictures <laughs> all those pretty pictures and and I, i've been lucky and not enough to be in them twice but i tell my readers um they were shot a year ago they weren't yes. shot in the you know and so the, it's it's the tricks of that is done behind the screens of the media that that we need to we are wise enough now to be able to know it i have to tell you this is a funny story i used to love house hunters the reality program house yes. hunters and then my daughter um, was a producer on a, a reality show and she, she said mom they knew they were going to get to like, their house about six months ago oh my god <laughs> it didn't yes. just happen and i was i was like so disillusioned when I heard that and uh, so if our turkey comes out a little lopsided or not browned perfectly but it still tastes delicious we can write that down as being thankful for a delicious though somewhat ugly turkey we or... don't even have to mention the tur- fact that the tur- <laughs> turkey is ugly we can cut it in the kitchen and then bring it to the oh, dining room oh. table <laughs> Good trick. I like that. Good <laughs> trick. Yeah, we're not going to put that picture yeah. in the magazine anyway. Yeah. There you go. Well, mm-hmm. Sarah, we are so delighted to have had you share your wisdom on gratitude before our Thanksgiving holiday and that special tip with the turkey. And to <laughs> enter that season with boundaries on our electronic and social media. I think that's a really good tip, too. And yeah. I appreciate you stating that health is wealth. And thank you for explaining how we can call challenges blessings, even through gritted teeth to dampen Mm -hmm. that sting. 
Yeah. And I'm grateful that you told us about viewing your six graces as your three coins, gratitude and joy, order and simplicity, beauty and harmony. So Sarah, you've enlightened us on being actively grateful. So my last question for you is how do you keep your well in wealthy? I keep my well in wealthy by starting my day, uh, bookending my days with prayer and meditation and setting boundaries, social boundaries, and caring for the very close, close to me. But I would say that that is, that's my anchor. Gratitude is my anchor. Um, Oh, it it, sounds like you've worked at it and you continue to work at it. So you and I, I, we're going to invite Eric back. So (laughs) Eric, Will you join us again, Oh, please? absolutely. This has been well, fantastic. So have you thought about at least three things for which you are grateful today? I, I have. And the funny thing is, it's three Fs, but now I have a fourth F. So the first three are my faith. I'm very thankful mm-hmm. for that. My family and my friends. And I, I consider Sarah, I hope you're okay with this. I consider you a new friend. And, and Barbara, you're a great friend uh, for what Wonderful. you do. Um but I've got to say, Sarah, something that you said stuck with me. And so this is my fourth one. And that's that feeling full. Mm. It's a goal because I love food. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I think, no, seriously, but I, I think that that's how I draw that parallel. When I'm <laughs> full, whether it's Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm. or just a good meal with my family any day of the week, I am, that's when I'm most satisfied. Mm-hmm. So if I can feel full through my gratefulness, through my gratitude, through times when I don't necessarily want to feel grateful, if I can feel that same fullness, then that means I'm satisfied. And I just, I thought that was beautiful when you said that. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. And yes, new friends. I've made new friends. I'm very grateful for both of you. Thank you for having me on today. And thank you for joining us. And from all of us, we wish you and everyone listening today a happy Thanksgiving, and every day, a day full of gratitude. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Keeping the Well in Wealthy with Barbara Archer, sponsored by Hightower. Click the follow button to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Hightower Wealth Advisors. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning. Hightower Wealth Advisors is a group comprised of investment professionals registered with Hightower Advisors LLC and SEC Registered Investment Advisor. Some investment professionals may also be registered with Hightower Securities LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. Advisory services are offered through Hightower Advisors, LLC. Securities are offered through Hightower Securities, LLC. This is not an offer to buy or sell securities. No investment process is free of risk, and there is no guarantee that the investment process or the investment opportunities referenced herein will be profitable. Past performance is neither indicative nor a guarantee of future results. The investment opportunities referenced herein may not be suitable for all investors. All data or other information referenced herein is from sources believed to be reliable. Any opinions, news, research, analysis, prices, or other data or information contained in this presentation is provided as general market commentary and does not constitute investment advice. Hightower Wealth Advisors and Hightower Advisors LLC or any of its affiliates make no representations or warranties expressed or implied as to the accuracy or completeness of the information or for statements or errors or omissions or results obtained from the use of this information. Hightower Wealth Advisors and Hightower Advisors LLC assume no liability for any action made or taken in reliance on or relating in any way to this information. The information is provided as of the date referenced in the document. Such data and other information are subject to change without notice. This document was created for informational purposes only. The opinions expressed herein are solely those of the authors and do not represent those of Hightower Advisors LLC or any of its affiliates. Hightower Advisors LLC or any of its affiliates do not provide tax or legal advice. This material is not intended or written to provide and should not be relied upon or used as a substitute for tax or legal advice. 
Information contained herein does not consider an individual's or entity's specific circumstances or applicable governing law, which may vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction and be subject to change. Clients are urged to consult their tax or legal advisor for related questions.